This week on Inside Oswego Speedway, we look back at the first official round of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series, and we'll get things kicked off with our Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Heat races from last Saturday night. And it was David LaTulip and Anthony Lacerdo starting up there on row number one, and it would be Lacerdo in the Lighthouse Lanes car number one machine jumping out into the early lead over LaTulip. And Oswego High School runner Camden Proud in the 54, just 15 years old and proud, works to the inside of La Tulip into corner number three. So now we've got a 16-year-old out in front, a 15-year-old riding in second. Checkered flag in the air, Anthony Lacerdo crosses the stripe for his third career heat race win at Oswego Speedway. Qualifier number two for the Small Block Super Series, Cameron Rowe and Danny Apt in the number 57 machine, but look at Alex Hogue on the outside in the FK Rod Ends car number 73, trying to work the top side of the speedway as Dalton Doyle in the number 01 works to the low side into that third corner. Apt out in front, Jack Patrick would be the man on the move in this one, slicing to the inside, going into corner number one to take the race lead, looking for yet another qualifying heat race win in the Longley Brothers Dodge car number nine. Hogue would follow through on the inside as well as Apt falls from the lead back to position at number three. Checkered flag in the air this time by Jack Patrick with yet another heat race qualifier win this season over Alex Hogue, Danny Apt, Cameron Rowe, and Craig Harris. Third and final qualifying heat race underway. Scott Schaefer in the 76 and Jason Simmons would start this one up there on row number one. And it was Simmons in the number 98 machine darting out into the early race lead with Schaefer tucking into second. Mark Castilla in third, but it would be Barry Kingsley on the top side moving around to take that spot. Out in front in this one, green to checkered all on his own. The DNS landscaping number 98 machine of Simmons taking the win. Kingsley comes home in second, Mike Bond would charge up to third in the number 74. Isma Super Modified qualifying heat number one, Mark Samet and Justin Belfiore in the number 98 machine started up there on row number one and it would be the Canadian Samet jumping out into the lead in the 78 machine with the 74 of Rob Summers pulling through up and into that runner up spot. 10 laps goes by fast, Samet led green to checkered in the 78 machine with Summers coming home in second. Bell Fuhr came home in the third spot. DJ Schulich charged on to position number four. Qualifying heat race number two, Liquid Lou Ciccone and John McKennedy up there on that front row. Chris Purley in the Vic Miller Racing car number 11 riding in the third spot as they charge down the back stretch and into corner number three. Ciccone would have no issue in this one as he charges into corner number three. Lou Ciccone would take the win in qualifying heat race number two with Purley, McKennedy, and Allison Cummins in the number 39 machine rounding out the top four qualifiers. Third and final qualifying heat race on the line for the Isma Super Modifieds, but we had trouble in corner number four. The 27 of Jamie Timmons would touch wheels with the 02 of Brandon Bellinger. Timmons would be done for the night. On the restart, the eight machine of Mo Lilji blasts out into the race lead. His teammate, Mike Lichty, would charge to the top side as well. Lichty drives around Wickham to take over the runner up spot. Out in front, it was all Mo Lilji in the Reed Salvage number eight machine charging on to the win in the third and final qualifying heat race. Lichty would come in second in the 84. And earlier on in the evening, Lichty would become the second driver to join the 14 second club at Oswego Speedway. I don't believe it. I think there's something <laughs> wrong with the scoreboard. No, it was uh, it was a good lap, you know, and that just shows how hard everybody works on this, uh, this car and everybody from Reed Salvage. Uh, you know, it was disappointing we got rained out. Well, now, now it goes back a month ago, but uh, that time, because we were good in practice. And, uh, you know, this track's been good to us over the last two years. We've uh, we've been keep finding uh, a little more speed, and uh, we just need a little more, uh, apparently. But car seems good, practice went well, and uh, obviously time trials went well also. New York State's fastest action continues in the month of June. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, June 14th, it's Driver Autograph Night. Presented by Century 21, Galloway Realty, and OswegoCountyToday.com. Join us on the Speedway's front stretch to meet your favorite racer car driver featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zemkin. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's driver autograph night. Saturday, June 14th. Kids 16 and under free. The Pathfinder Bank Small Block Supers would kick off the feature racing action last Saturday night. It would be Camden Proud and Cameron Rowe up there on row number one 
proud his first time ever starting an event from the pole position and he does a fantastic job. Racing off into the early lead out of corner number two with Rowe and Danny App tucking in there second and third, but trouble further on back. The team tap out machines of Barry Kingsley and Jason Simmons tangle into corner number three. More cars pile in behind as you get a look at the replay as the 91 of Kingsley was looking for room to the low side of the 98 of Simmons. The two cars come together and the rest get collected in there into corner number three. We get another look at it here from the rear GoPro camera of Mike Bond as you get a look at Andrew Shartner and Mike Bruce trying to work their way through the mayhem in corner number three. That race fans is how you do it right there. The restart would force another double file start as no laps were completed, so Proud would have to try it one more time in the 54. And yet again, the 15-year-old races out to the top spot with Rowe, Danny Apt, and Anthony Lucerto right there in position number four, trying to pull along the 73 of Alex Hogue along with him. Proud would run away early on in this one as Rowe, Apt, and Lucerto battle, but the 77 would run into issues into corner number three. Cameron Rowe dropping out of this one. That would move Danny Apt up into second, and the one of Anthony Lucerto into third ahead of Hogue and Jack Patrick. The battle up front would continue to rage, but Mike Bruce in the number 22 was trying to work his way through the field as well, working to the low side of the 18 of Andrew Shartner as Mike Bond tries to follow and pick a lane back there in the number 74 machine as they race into corner number one now. Lucerto up into the runner-up spot, made the move on Danny App going to the inside in corner number three. Now he would try to chase down your race leader as the battle continues to rage further back between the 22 of Bruce and the 18 of Shartner. This time Bruce washes a little bit high and and that leaves the low lane open one more time for Shartner and Bond to slip through as well. Out front though, the lead had changed hands and it was now Anthony Lucerto out in front as he put the same low side move on Proud into corner number three. Lucerto is the new race leader. Proud though would stay there tight, right in position number two. Hogue riding in third, Patrick in fourth as they continue to battle now out of that second corner and down the back straightaway. Bond trying to look for a low lane on Shartner. Bruce would try the high side. He loses the handle and clocks the foam in corner number four and once again we would have another look out of the rear end of the bond number 74 as bruce tries to find the high lane the car will disappear momentarily and then it reappears in the foam out of turn four restart late in this one lacerdo trying to hang on for his first career feature win proud trying to do all he can to take it away he gets a little loose out of that fourth corner, locks up the left front wheel, and Alex Hogue in the 73 with a great move to the top side of the speedway out of corner number four, and he pulls up into that runner-up spot, but out in front in his second full year of competition, now officially the youngest feature winner in the history of Oswego Speedway, 16-year-old Anthony Lacerdo gets the victory over Hogue, proud, Patrick and Andrew Shartner in the top five. Mike Bond and Steve Amp would finish sixth and seventh as Lacerdo pulls the lighthouse lanes. Car number one machine down into victory lane. A very popular win in Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane for Anthony Lacerdo as he hugs his family and talks to Keith Zare as a feature winner. This is unbelievable. I've been dreaming about this since I was four years old. This is incredible. I don't even know how to explain it. Well, I knew Camden's been fast all night. He's doing a heck of a job. And uh, I knew we were faster because we kind of reeled them in in very few laps. And I knew you have to take every chance you can in these small blocks. They're so hard to pass. And I had a nose in there, and I just went for it. Well, uh, those two guys, Anthony and Cannon, both drove a heck of a race for being as young as they are. I'm not used to being the old guy, but they both did a great job. And uh, we were just, we were, I was going for it, and it, Cannon was going for it. Both got loose, and he locked it up a little bit. I was able to skate by, but. Uh, Really, really need to thank my wife, my kids, my dad, my in-laws, Bobby, Michelle, Ray Hedger, and just a very small family team, and uh, this is a lot of fun. I was really nervous to start on the pole. This is only my third or fourth race here, and um, there's nobody I'd rather have behind me than Anthony. I knew he'd run me clean, and we ran a great race together. He got by me down there in three, and on the last lap there, I was just going for it. I was almost under him and got real sideways, and Alex went by me on the outside, but it was a great clean racing out there, and I had a lot of fun for sure. With another top five finish, Andrew Shartner remains the series point leader over Mike Bond, Jack Patrick, Steve Amt, and Craig Harris in the top five. 
New York State's fastest action continues in the month of June. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, June 14th, it's Driver Autograph Night. Presented by Century 21, Galloway Realty, and OswegoCountyToday.com. Join us on the Speedway's front stretch to meet your favorite race car driver. Featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zemkin. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's Driver Autograph Night. Saturday, June 14th, kids 16 and under free. Finally, after a month-long wait, it was time for Green Flag Racing in the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series in Oswego Speedway. And it was Rob Summers in the Paco Transportation car number 74 working his way into the early race lead ahead of the 21 of Eddie Whitcomb Jr. and the 78 of Mark Samet. As the field files into corner number three, yellow lights would come on early, though, for issues with the 61 of Lou Sacconi. As the right front collapses on that machine, Sacconi would be done for the night. On the restart, Purley and Lichty would begin to position themselves in the field as Purley works to the high side of Wickham. Lichty to the low side of the 39 of Allison Cummins as they start to work down and chase the number 78 of Mark Samet. And eventually they would do just that. Down the back straightaway, Purley to the low side of the Canadian into corner number three. Lichty would follow through as well in number 84 as he charges to the low side down the front stretch and into corner number one. Lap traffic would play a role here into corner number three as Rob Summers, the race leader, goes around Ryan Gath in the number 97 machine. Lichty looks to try to take the advantage on Purley, but look at this into corner number one. Lichty hops up and over the engine of the Gath number 97. Gath would spin, lose control. Lichty would regain his position on the speedway. Laps later, another tangle in corner number two involving Lou LeVay, Dan Bose, and the 01 of Danny Connors would bring red lights onto the speedway. But on the restart, Lichty proved that he is yet again the man to beat at Oswego Speedway as he first works to the outside of the 11 of Purley into corner number three to take the runner-up spot. And then one lap later, down the front straightaway, he now charges to the outside of his teammate Summers into corner number one and Lichty and the Reed Salvage car number 84 finds the lane he needs into corner number three to blast out in front and run away with this one. Lichty working down into that third corner checkered flags would wave after 50 laps. Three wins in a row for Mike Lichty out in front in this one. Summers would come home in second ahead of Purley. Mo Lilji and Mark Samet in the top five. Allison Cummins Justin Belfiore, Eddie Wickham, Dave Schulich Jr. would finish in the top nine spots. Ben Seitz would round out the top ten. Mike Lichty and Turning Stone Resort Casino. Victory Lane yet again talked to Keith Zare. That was close, let me tell you. Especially trying to trace down uh, Robbie and Chris there. Uh, I knew I was only going to get a couple opportunities and I saw a lap car down there. Chris poked his nose to the inside and then kind of went high. So I got my nose down on the inside and I kind of cut the corner way too straight and tapped wheels with, uh, with Howie's, uh, Howie's car, so I apologize about that, but man, I can't say enough about this place. I love coming here, I grew up here. Uh, Craig Reed, everybody that puts effort into this program, Dickie, Ryan, I mean, they are brilliant people and they build a hell of a race car. Level performance, everybody that, uh, that puts a hand in. Everybody always talking about DJ with his fire and ice deal, and it looks like we just put out the fire. It was tough there. Uh, Mike's always good here, and uh, I gotta tell you, I gotta thank Mike, uh, probably most of everyone. He really worked his butt off. You know, I get to show up to the track with my helmet and jump in these cars and have a good time, but uh, he works on these cars all week, and uh, he deserves a win. But all my guys did a great job of pack coat trucking. Uh, thanks a lot. Raven, uh, Raven Salvage Yard, uh, everyone's been just doing a great job and uh, glad we had a good night. Tonight was good, uh, it was fun to race out there, it was tough, um, Mikey definitely earned it, uh, Robbie did a great job, it was fun just racing, um, we kind of raced the whole the whole time, I didn't have the car tonight but I definitely had a car for top three and that's what we shoot for and we we're happy to put on a show and it looked like a wild one for a little while there so uh, I hope the fans got their money's worth.